While we remain standing, we'll start with two anthems. Nairobi County, Honorable Johnson Sakaja, who's the host governor, to make a few remarks. As a newly minted Deputy President, um, Honorable Chief Justice, and all. On behalf of the Supreme Court of Kenya, I am most delighted to welcome you all to this conference as we commemorate 12 years since the establishment of the Supreme Court of Kenya. Allow me to particularly single out for special mention and recognition my brother and sister chief justices and judges from other jurisdictions who have traveled from across the continent and the world to join us for this conference. Let us appreciate our esteemed guests. The theme of the conference, reflecting and introspecting on the Supreme Court of Kenya's jurisprudence, 12 years of defending the Constitution, captures the dual purpose of our conference, which is to celebrate the milestones we have achieved while critically examining the journey we continue to chart as Kenya's apex court and the ongoing commitment to uphold justice, to uphold constitutionalism, and to uphold the rule of law. At the heart of this conference is the idea that institutions matter. Institutions are the anchors of our democratic aspirations. The establishment of the Supreme Court as the ultimate interpreter and guardian of the Constitution embodies the expectation that the Supreme Court provides stability, certainty, and predictability in resolving the inevitable conflicts that arise within our society. Therefore, we are affirming the idea that our future rise in building strong and robust institutions that will serve as the catalysts for the national progress and development. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, over the past 12 years, the Supreme Court has played a transformative role in shaping both Kenya's jurisprudence and shaping our country's social political development. This court's landmark judgments 
have influenced the daily lives of Kenyans while reinforcing the core principles of our democracy. Through hearing and determining four presidential election petitions over the last three election cycles, the court has set critical benchmarks for conducting free, fair, and transparent elections. Likewise, through the landmark advisory opinions on devolution and the relationship between the bicameral houses of parliament, the Supreme Court has developed guiding frameworks that clarify interactions between the National Assembly and the Senate, reinforcing devolution as a cornerstone of our transformative constitution. Furthermore, in defining the parameters for constitutional amendments in the BBI case and establishing principles of public participation in the BAT and recently in the Finance Act cases, the court's jurisprudence has strengthened the democratic foundations of governance and harmonizing the judiciary's benchmark on the areas of public participation that still requires parliamentary action. The court's decisions have also directly addressed issues of land rights, human rights, social and economic justice, and family law. In the same vein, the courts have addressed housing rights jurisprudence in the Me Too Bell cases, which reflects the court's commitment to socioeconomic rights. The courts uh, has set jurisprudence guiding the families on how to uphold the family as the cornerstone of our society. In these and countless other judgments, the Supreme Court has affirmed its role as a transformative agent in the society. Despite the inevitable pitfalls of perception, all capture that come as a result of the court's invitation to address political questions, the court's jurisprudence has purposefully honest the Constitution as a powerful tool to promote the well-being of individuals and driving societal transformation for the common good. Notably, the decisions of the Supreme Court of Kenya have garnered significant respect and citation across the region and beyond. This recognition in the global legal community underscores the court's maturity into a respected institution whose well-reasoned judgments contribute to evolving discourse on the law and justice wound wind. I'm happy to be here um, to celebrate uh, what our Supreme Court has done for the last 12 years. And it's a good thing that our Supreme Court has decided to introspect and reflect even as they usher themselves into teenage. Because now they are 12. So they are entering teenage and the responsibilities and, and the experiences of teenage will obviously visit their experience. Um, and therefore, and, and that is on a light note, I'm very careful, Your Excellency, because I am uh, an officer of the court. So I'm very careful what I say. I don't want to be accused later of saying that uh, the Supreme Court is entering teenage uh, in future. Your Excellency, allow me to say two quick things before I invite you. The first one is to appreciate what our Supreme Court has done to create formidable jurisprudence on major public interest uh, issues and major public um, matters of uh, public and national importance. In the short time the Supreme Court of Kenya has ex uh, existed, the the jurisprudence has been quite uh, groundbreaking. And um, on that front, I think it will be unfair for 
any assessor to actually fault the performance of the Supreme Court. To deliver the public good called justice, of course, the court has to do that through its jurisprudence and through the decisions they make. The court has also done very well in terms of the infrastructure, the software, the technology bit. And among the arms of government and the agencies of government, I think the judiciary is ahead of uh, the rest of us. I remember my Lord Chief Justice Maraga when um, we were confronted with uh, the predicament of COVID, issued certain uh, rules, which we now call the Maraga rules, practice rules, which actually made justice, you know, faster, more efficient, more convenient, even if we were lock, all locked down by this public health emergency called COVID. And even after COVID um, um, lapsed, it, it appears that the way of the future in the administration of justice will be through the virtual courts and making sure we spend a lot, a, a little time or less, as less time as possible in, in a physical uh, uh, engagements in courtrooms. So again, on the issue of technology and the software for delivering the jurisprudence or delivering justice, the Supreme Court has done a good job.